Hello and welcome to another edition of your favorite health program, NAFTAC and your health. This is where you get informed about NAFTAC's daily endeavor in safeguarding health. My name is Tosin Omolaja. All over the world, micro, small and medium scale businesses are at the bedrock of economic growth. And NAFTAC continues to play a significant role not only in ensuring that regulated products, which includes drugs, food, cosmetics, and chemicals that are produced by MSMEs in Nigeria are safe for use and consumption, but actively encourages these businesses to come upstream. NAPDAC is a regulatory organization, but it's also an organization that impacts trade. NAPDAC controls uh, the importation, the exportation, manufacture, distribution of so many uh, regulated products, including the, of course, sale and use. Uh, but the MSMEs cover uh, only part of these regulated products. The MSMEs cover food, water, beverage, now some medical devices. They, don't, they cannot cover drugs, they cannot cover herbal medicines because they are complicated in terms of the processing. Uh, but most of the other uh, items, you know, the MSM is covered. NAFDAQ has at all times rose up to its responsibility of spurring safety and economic growth of small businesses, even in times of grave health challenges, such as the coronavirus pandemic that is menacing the entire world. During this time, the agency has been proactive in encouraging and approving MSMEs capable of producing products that can help prevent and or treat the disease. Some of such are production of alcohol-based sanitizers and so on. For the last uh, five to six weeks, NAVDAC has been working around the clock uh, in terms of providing the commodities that are needed for COVID-19. Uh, the testing kits are out of the range of the MSMEs uh, because the testing kits are biochemistry based, science based uh, devices. Uh, but uh, we have many or several others that MSMEs are now doing because we want to build this local content. And this includes masks, sanitizers, and PPEs. We have registered over 70 companies over the last five to six weeks uh, that are making sanitizers and we are using expedited approval, emergency use approval. And this is uh, certified by WHO. Uh, for masks, the one thing that gladdens my heart is that we are now thinking local. So many people now are making masks. This is extremely important for us as people, because the government cannot provide everybody must. Therefore, it's an opportunity for uh, micro small businesses to start making masks. The MSMEs are focusing on the barrier mask, the non-medical mask, which you and I need. And uh, I'm very happy that now we have local companies uh, that are making masks. We still have a lot coming from overseas as imported, but by and large, we have many com several companies now making masks. PPEs also, MSMEs are covering that. It is a good thing for Nigeria because we need to look inward and have a sense of self-sufficiency. It is not everything we have to buy from outside, but that has been our pattern for decades. But something good is coming out of COVID-19. NAFDAQ and indeed its Director General take the issue of MSMEs very seriously. First, because it is central to the objectives of the current government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as enshrined in the President's Executive Order No. 1, and supported by several initiatives. And secondly, the economy requires this crop of businesses to consistently grow GDP. This is extremely important for us in NAVDAQ because with what we have today, 
our attention must be on MSMEs. Because if we don't have strong MSMEs, we will not have trade. Let's take day-to-day -day use, for example. Food, water, beverage, things like that. We have to make sure that our MSMEs sectors are strong enough in order to be able to provide quality products. That's where the regulatory comes in. Comes in. Quality products for our people. So, NAVDAC and MSMEs are kind of joined at the hip because with our regulation comes also trade. With our regulation comes reduction of unemployment. With our regulation comes increase in our GDP. NAFDAC is seizing the moment to do more to support and encourage local production of regulated products by creating new pathways for participation and economic growth, especially for MSMEs. The COVID uh, pandemic has given us a lot of opportunities to look internally. It has given us opportunity to think local content. Uh, so this is a good time to actually show what NAVDAC does well. Uh, we do many things well, but in terms of MSMEs, uh, we are trying to encourage more people to join that sector. Uh, very soon we're going to launch the MSMEs Palliatives Program from NAVDAC, giving incentives uh, to MSMEs, uh, giving a drastic reduction about 80% reduction in the registration fees. Uh, we're going to assist them in registering uh, using our e-registration portal. Uh, this is very important to us because we want as many MSMEs or micro small businesses to join our database, to increase our database. The first couple of hundred people that register with us, we get we register free. Then we're going to have a drastic reduction in the registration fee, up to about 80%. And then we're going to have assisted registration. A lot of our MSMEs are not computer savvy. With that, we were preparing and we got some computers distributed to some of our zones. We still need more computers, but at least we are starting from somewhere. Uh, and we're going to give incentives why? Because the time is so bad for many people economically. Nigeria uh, has lost a lot of income due to downfall in the oil price. Uh, the lockdown has not helped us generally as a country. So we want to incentivize our micro small databases so that they can do their businesses uh, not using too much uh, investment. All of these initiatives that are being brought to bear are in addition to all other measures the agency had put in place before now. For instance, since May 2018, the agency had decentralized its registration structures to allow Nigerians from all over the country register in their various states and zones without needing to visit Lagos or Abuja. In Lagos, the commercial capital of the country, a dedicated directorate was also created to focus and cater for MSMEs. Some of NAFDAC's major instruments of encouraging MSMEs and ensuring that they carry out their business activities under standardized guidelines are sensitization programs, workshops, trainings, as well as exhibitions. NAFDAQ MSME sensitization programs spans the length and breadth of the country and reaches out to people of all walks of life. The agency's outreach touches every sector, including the military. Even though we are retiring, but we are not tired. The reason why they bring this uh, uh, lecture is for us to get aware of what and what we are going to do and be, uh, so that we don't fall victims of uh, fraudulent acts. We have gotten many uh, information like we now they have told us how we can register and the registration time that it takes 20, uh, 90 days for small scale businesses, 120 days for medium scale businesses and other things that NAVDAC is doing 
from the site. In fact, for me to know that Lavda also inspect products before they produce their product, they, pro they, they inspect raw materials, personnel, so, so all these things. It has been so educative for us and I think uh, it's a good thing for the centre that they have organised this lecture for us. For a person that has served this, the, the military for like 35 years or 20 years, and you're going into a business, you need this kind of lecture. And I thank God that enough that came to this place to come and tell us that we don't need, like like what we will be hearing that if you want to register in NAVDAC, you need a huge amount to register and that fear that uh, no but I go to get to the office that they will not answer you. But with, with the lecture we received today, we at least we are really informed that the NAVDAC is not what how people paint it to be. Many prospective players in this sector of the economy had hitherto been swindled by so-called consultants who act as middlemen for the purpose of NAVDAC registration. This particularly has led many Nigerians to recede to the background and produce their products illegally and without help and supervision from NAVDAC. One of the most important advantages of going through NAVDAC is that small businesses who can't afford to hire certain expertise can get support and guidance as to how they can improve their production and indeed their market share. Exports is one other area where MSMEs have continued to fail and falter and the agency is working tirelessly to educate the players in this sector about the advantages of getting regulatory support. In terms of exports, I mentioned earlier that uh, our core mandate is to control exportation aside from importation. If we are supposed to control exportation, it means that we have to feature in exports or in exportation of goods. Last year, actually about a year and a half ago, I instituted the export committee because we weren't that focused and now we are more focused. We now interact more with other agencies that are in, involved in exports. Why is this so important? Because about 70% of our exports are rejected. I'm big on trade. It's not just regulatory. When we export and about 70 something percent are rejected, that is, that is almost scandalous. Because many people don't come through NAVDA. Because NAVDA doesn't go out to say yes. We are supposed to be controlling export, come, come, come. So we are doing a lot of sensitization now. And the good thing about export is that we don't charge anything. NAVDA doesn't charge money, except for 5,000 Naira, just to be sure that you're on the single portal window. So MSMEs can use this uh, avenue to generate income, but it has to be of quality. We have to test it so that after investing so much money, the products will not be rejected by the other country. Let's go on a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. As the coronavirus has placed on all peoples of the world a new normal, NAFDAC, as an agency of government saddled with the responsibility of safeguarding the health of the nation, continues to educate and sensitize the public through various channels about how to safeguard themselves during this time, especially with the proper use and production of face masks. The different types of face masks include surgical masks, or what is known as medical masks, and non-surgical masks. Surgical or medical masks are the fairly loose-fitting disposable masks used by medical health personnel in health facilities, especially while treating patients. The non-surgical masks, also called non-medical face masks, are essentially masks or face covers made of fabric materials. They are not standardized and are not intended for use in healthcare settings or by healthcare professionals. Other masks include the N95 respirator, 
which is essentially a respiratory protective device made of fine mesh synthetic polymer fiber, otherwise called non-woven polypropylene, and designed to achieve a very close facial fit. And if properly fitted, the filtration capabilities of N95 respirators exceed those of face masks because it achieves a very efficient filtration of airborne particles. Its N95 designation means that when subjected to careful testing, the respirator blocks at least 95% of very small 0.3 micron test particles. The N98 respirator is a respiratory protective device designed to achieve a very close facial fit and very efficient filtration of airborne particles. Made of fine mesh synthetic polymer fiber, otherwise called non-woven polypropylene, the N98 designation means that when subjected to careful testing, the respirator blocks at least 98% of very small 0.25 micron test particles. There is also the KN95 respirator. This mask is the Chinese version of the American N95 respirator with significant difference in design and face fit. So it is extremely important for non-medical mask or the type of mask that you and I will use, barrier mask, to be made of good material. Uh, so not all uh, non-medical masks are the same. It depends on the type of uh, material. The material that is used is, uh, can be you know, any type of uh, fabric, non-woven uh, wadding, 100% uh, cotton, most of the time is used. Polyester, linen, or knit fabric can also be used. But for somebody to be sure that they are wearing, that the mask is protective enough, uh, the thickness is extremely important. And NAVDAC is going to be testing that, not because we are supposed to, uh, but because we want to safeguard the health of our own people. So that anybody that is going to be making masks now will know that they should choose the fabric carefully. If somebody has a barrier mask on and another person uh, lights a cigarette lighter, for example, and that person can blow that cigarette lighter off, the barrier mask is not protective enough. If the person cannot blow that cigarette lighter off, then it is protective enough. It's a simple uh, test. And I believe that uh, people can easily do that. Uh, we are very good at, at making sure that things are okay if we are guided well. It's time now for the news on NAFTAC updates. NAFTA warns the public against use of miracle mineral solution. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFTA, warns the public against the use of miracle mineral solution, MMS. The agency can confirm that this solution has potential life-threatening effects on consumers. According to NAFDAQ Director General, Professor Mojisola Adeyeye, Miracle Mineral Solution MMS contains sodium chloride and when mixed with lime and lemon, becomes chlorine dioxide, which is harmful to humans. The public are therefore advised to stay away from this miracle solution. Non-surgical face masks should be washed daily. NAFDAQ enjoins the public that non-surgical or non-medical face masks which are reusable should be washed daily to properly protect the user consistently from the dangers of being infected by COVID-19. As for the production of these face masks, 
The agency strongly advises that they should be made with double layer of fabric to increase absorbency and effectiveness. Preferably, 100% cotton material is best for making non-medical face masks, although polyester, linen and knit fabric can be used. NAFDAQ refutes unapproved drugs or vaccines for COVID-19 cure. National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAQ, is concerned about several reports and claims on social media and other media on drugs or vaccines to cure COVID-19. The Director General of the agency, Professor Mojisola Adeyegi, hereby refutes such claims and reports. NAFDAQ has not granted any approvals to any product for use as a cure or vaccine against COVID-19. To put the record straight, no drugs or vaccines have been given approval in Nigeria for cure of COVID-19. While medical researchers globally, the federal government of Nigeria and the World Health Organization are working tirelessly on the discovery of vaccines and drugs to cure COVID-19, the agency urges the public to desist from making unsubstantiated claims as NAPDAC is the only authority in the country to grant approval to such drugs and vaccines. NAPDAC will continue to work with all relevant stakeholders to safeguard the health of Nigerians and in the event of any approved drug or vaccine for the cure of COVID-19, the agency will not hesitate to inform the public accordingly. However, the public is advised to comply strictly with measures issued by NCDC to prevent the further spread of COVID-19 in Nigeria. These include the use of face coverings or masks in addition to social distancing, washing of hands and use of alcohol-based sanitizers. NAFDAQ sanctions marketers for artificial ripening of fruits with calcium carbide in Yobe State. In an effort to ensure the availability of only good quality and healthy fruits during this Ramadan fasting period, the Yobe State Office mounted surveillance on markets and fruit selling depots in the state. The survey resulted in the arrest of one Alhaji Salisu Nasale and two of his accomplices artificially ripening fruits using calcium carbide in Potiskum fruit market. The use of calcium carbide is being discouraged worldwide due to associated health hazards. The calcium carbide treatment of food is extremely hazardous because it contains traces of arsenic and phosphorus. Once dissolved in water, it produces ethylene gas which affects different body organs and causes various health problems like headache, dizziness, mood distortion, sleepiness, mental confusion, cerebral endema, seizures, cancer, and so on. The raid and arrest was carried out at Lamba Idrisa area, Potiskum local government area of Yobe State, and unripe fruits worth 200,000 naira were confiscated and destroyed. The state coordinator, Alhaji Lawan Dagengilma, warned all those engaging in such practices to desist henceforth or face the wrath of the law, as Yobe State and the entire Nigeria will not be a safe haven for such practices. He appealed to the general public to report anybody seen engaging in sharp and unhealthy practices that will endanger the lives of the public. That's it on NAFDAQ Update. You've been updated. This is where we say goodbye on today's edition of the program, NAFDAQ and your health. Join us again, same time, same station, next week for another insightful, fresh edition. Remember, safeguarding the health of the nation is our collective responsibility. So report fake and unwholesome food and drugs and activities that create them in your area. You may have questions, comments or inquiries. Kindly contact us. You can reach NAFTA via toll-free numbers. For inquiries, call 0700-162-3322. For complaints, please call 0800-162-3322. Or email NAFTA at nafta.gov.ng. Till next week, stay safe.